how to find your Amazon FBA suppliers. Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started with Amazon FBA and how do you actually find suppliers for your product? So let's get into it now. You might be wondering what is FBA by Amazon? This is basically fulfillment by Amazon. So Amazon delivers your products. They set up storage, shipping, removals and returns. They manage all of that stuff for your products. All you do is create your product listing, prepare your products, and ship your products to Amazon. So you have to create your shipping plan and you have to print Amazon shipment ID labels and you have to just send your products to the Amazon fulfillment centers. Now, how can you actually make a profit out of Amazon FBA selling other products? Well, there are multiple ways that you can make a whole lot of profits with Amazon FBA. Now, one of the most popular suppliers is definitely Alibaba and you might be wondering, okay, this is overseas. I ship in America or Canada or Europe and I don't want to get overseas suppliers. Well, there are a bunch of pros and cons to getting overseas suppliers. What I do recommend is you should check out Alibaba. The reason that I do recommend it is because you get a lot more variety and you get a lot more accessibility on Alibaba for products. You can get customization. But if you want to look for a local supplier, you can. But give you guys like an illustration of the pros and cons of overseas suppliers like Alibaba, AliExpress, or any other a third party platform that you can use to supply your products is well there are pros and cons with each side for the pros of overseas suppliers you have lower prices so if i was to look on alibaba and if i wish to look on amazon for the same two products i would usually find the alibaba product on a lower than half price that's just how it goes that's just how i've seen all of the work be uh, i've noticed this in a lot of work and a lot of products in like simple products as well and if you're ordering in bulk you're gonna get like a better price on the alibaba product instead of you know using any kind of other supplier for your amazon business so for lower prices uh getting something from alibaba is definitely worth it now another pro with your overseas suppliers is that you have a variety of products so you can search for like a black dress and you're gonna get like a thousand black dresses well if you were to even use like a drop shipping supplier you would only get like five to six different kinds and varieties which i find to be a bit annoying especially now when inclusivity is like a big thing everyone wants a lot of variety in their product so you can find a lot of variety of products on alibaba now the other good part about finding overseas suppliers is that they are vetted suppliers a lot of these people have been working in these industries for years upon years and they're pretty good at what they do so they have an understanding of how everything works and how to navigate through all of that now another thing you might be wondering is that it is commonly used and if you contact anyone that is running like a amazon fba business and you ask them where they are uh, supplying their products from unless they're like making their own homemade products they are most likely uh, using overseas suppliers and the reason for that is as i stated previously uh, overseas suppliers are able to give the lowest prices so you cannot find anything cheaper than you would on alibaba or aliexpress and that is the reason why a majority of amazon fba suppliers are using alibaba or any other overseas uh, overseas supplier because they want the best price for the best amount of quality and if you're able to find a good quality product on any of these platforms you're going to get a good price as well like higher end products if i was to look for a fur coat over here if i don't look at the price and if i opt for like an expensive kind of item over here i'm gonna be able to still find a very very good and luxurious product like this fur coat 180 dollars i could easily flip this and relist this for over like a thousand dollars because i've seen coats like these go up for just like four thousand not four thousand four hundred five hundred dollars easily and if you're able to market it good enough you could even sell that for a thousand dollars so you can really find great items on alibaba or any other overseas supplier and you're going to be able to find good quality items at a better price than you would with the local suppliers now the other pro with these suppliers is that uh, they have english speaking representatives so usually in most cases i've found that i haven't had a lot of issues with communication a lot of these uh companies have hired people that have learned english that have experience speaking in english and that can easily speak english so they can easily communicate with you so you're not gonna be running into you know issues with communication now uh, on the cons of having overseas suppliers is that you do have language barriers and you must be thinking like I just said they have English speaking representatives. That is the case in most situations, not all. 
so in some situations i have run into like they, they do speak english but they're just not very fluent at it and they're sometimes uh you know sometimes it can leave a communication barrier but if you're able to work around that and if you're able to patiently understand what they're trying to say if you're able to you know just wait a bit and understand what they're trying to say you're not going to run into a lot of issues and another con that I find with using an overseas supplier is the time difference. So uh, that has been an issue with me personally when running a business, when I'm contacting suppliers and they are not replying. Uh, usually it's like 2 a.m. at their place and I'm working at 2 p.m. So that can be a bit of an issue when you're running your business and you want immediate responses. Another issue that you might run into is coordination and shipping. So sometimes they can mess up your shipping or coordination. You might have to see like how you're going to ship your product products uh, how they're going to reach the amazon fulfillment centers if they're going to add the labels for you if you're supposed to add the labels after they ship it so that all needs to be coordinated between you and your suppliers and if you have like a good coordination with them you're going to be working fine but if there is some sort of language barrier then it might be an issue now another thing is that you can't do your due diligence so let's say i really like this fur coat product so if i really like this fur coat sure if they send me a sample and i like the sample that's good as well but if i actually go and turns out what they're shipping to my customers is a lower quality coat to like make more profit for themselves that would be very bad for my brand reputation that would be very bad for my amazon store and that is why uh th that can be like a big issue with your due diligence you can always like get a few sample products but after the sample products a lot of the times uh, you're not going to be able to diligently manage everything you are selling on your store from these alibaba shippers or these overseas suppliers so that is one issue that you can really run into with these kind of suppliers now if i was to talk about what questions you need to ask with your suppliers so uh, even with all those pros and cons, I still do lean towards going with overseas suppliers. Now, let's take the example of clothing and I want to search for a black dress. So if I just search for a black dress over here, you can see there are multiple dresses. Now, how do you actually know if a seller is reliable or not? Well, there are a few basic things you need to do. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on contact supplier and then you're going to ask for a sample product. That is the most important thing. Then you're also going to have the minimum order. So, and the MOQ is the minimum order quantity that you can see over here. What the minimum order quantity, so this is 10 pieces. You're going to negotiate with them and ask them, can you lower the minimum order quantity? So you need to ask all these basic questions. So uh, you can also do a logistics inquiry and you can also do a FAQ over here. So I would like to have a copy of your catalog. You want to ask any of these basic questions you can find. So make sure that you are negotiating between the minimum order quantity and the order samples and if you're paying the price of the sample you also need to ask like am i going to be refunded the sample price once i place a bulk order so if you're doing bulk orders later on you want to make sure that you're being refunded the initial sample price that you paid now once like you clear out all of these basic questions there are some other questions you need to ask with your supplier so once you have developed like a good communication you're going to click on contact supplier and then you're going to add your detailed requirement so what these questions are these are on the screen right now so you need to ask these basic questions so first off is the payment terms how is the payment system going to work Second off, you want to ask if this product is patented. So if there is like a product that has like a special design or something, you want to ask if that is patented because if it is patented that you most probably can't sell it on your Amazon store because that would be illegal. And then you also have to ask your packaging options, the labels that they're going to add. And if they have had any previous experience working with Amazon FBA sellers, then you also want to ask if they are the manufacturer or trading company. I want to ask them what the closest ports to their location are, the production time it takes to create those products, and what are the sample fees and will they be refunded once bulk orders are placed and you need to know what minimum order quantity is negotiable if you get a test order what is the material of the items that you're purchasing and make sure that you're actually coordinating a 10 percent discount because um, in most situations you can negotiate like upwards of five to ten percent discount so make sure you do ask for that and then you need to ask if you get to inspect the products and how uh, they would recommend that you ship the products to amazon so these are just some of the basic questions once all of these questions are answered and you get satisfactory answers i'm pretty sure that the supplier is trustworthy enough and this is how you find a trustworthy supplier for your amazon fba business so i hope you guys found this video helpful and you're now able to find your own suppliers as
as well make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the youtube channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment box down below and i will catch you guys in the next video